Hello, hello. I'm Brenton, one of our MCAT tutors here at Inspira Advantage, where we help students get to medical school and other professional programs. Welcome back to MCAT Bytes. Today, we're delving deeper into muscle physiology, focusing on the sliding filament model and the intricate chemistry that powers muscle contractions. Understanding these processes is essential for anyone studying biology and preparing for the MCAT. I remember seeing a whole passage on the biobiochem section of my MCAT on this topic, so you'll definitely want to pay attention. Let's take a deep look at the model itself. The sliding filament model describes muscle contractions through the interaction between actin and myosin within muscle fibers. This process starts when an action potential triggers the sarcoplasmic reticulum to release calcium ions. That released calcium will then bind to tr troponin, causing a conformational change that moves tropomyosin out of the way for myosin binding sites on actin filaments. This exposes myosin binding sites. We can see that visually in this picture, where we've got actin as the orange beads, the white rope is tropomyosin, calcium binding sites are purple, are on the purple spots, and troponin itself is the tri-purple thing here. We can see that when tropomyosin is moved, now all of a sudden there are these little circles on the orange for myosin binding sites that we can begin doing a power stroke, which we'll talk about in a momento. Once the binding sites are exposed, the myosin heads energized by ATP hydrolysis, will attach to actin and form cross bridges. Just fancy word to say they're binding. The hydrolysis of ATP to ADP and inorganic phosphate will initiate the power stroke. This literally causes it, the myosin to be flung. This is then followed by the eventual release of ADP and the binding of a new ATP molecule. Say that the ADP is up here. And when it gets phosphorylated, we get the inorganic phosphate coming on there to turn it to ATP. And if we were to phosphorylate that ADP, we would be moved back down to here, starting the process all over again. It's only when the ATP is hydrolyzed that we actually move anything. That's what's crucial to know. So when we run out of ATP, this is why people go into rigor mortis, because they use up all the ATP and we're only left with ADP. This leaves us in that high energy attached state. All of the muscles are tensed up. Now let's talk about creatine, something important for the MCAT and important as future medical professionals because people are gonna ask you about creatine. Creatine or creatine phosphate plays a critical role in quickly regenerating ATP from ADP, ensuring a steady supply of energy for muscle contractions. When ATP levels drop, creatine phosphate donates a phosphate group to ADP, forming new ATP molecules. This process is vital during the initial stages of high intensity exercise when the demand for ATP exceeds the supply from cellular respiration. Creatine supplementation boosts the availability of creatine phosphate in muscles, enhancing the capacity for quick ATP regeneration. This can lead to improved performance and short, intense exercise by extending the time muscles can contract efficiently before fatigue sets in. It's a clear example of how understanding muscle biochemistry can have practical applications in both medicine and athletics. The sliding filament theory coupled with the biochemical process of ATP regeneration and the role of creatine, offers a comprehensive view of how muscles contract and sustain activity. For the biobiochem section of the MCAT, a deep understanding of these processes is crucial, not just for exams, but for future careers as a doctor. So I hope this helped, and thank you so much for watching our video on sliding filament theory. I will see you next time.